Your local Salvation Army is whatever you or your family might need it to be. To the top seeds. <laughs> yeah, we had, we had a lot of matches that came close to the 10th frame. Um, some people got lucky, some people didn't. Well, we have a real interesting field today, and leading our tournament today is Mr. Trey Cummings. Okay, well, Trey, Trey's our Navy representative here. He's uh, sitting behind um, our table there. Uh, average 227 for the match play. I tell you what, this guy is tough. Well, he won his first title this past year, and uh, I think he's ready to win. He's, uh, he's at Pearl Harbor, and he feels at home here. He could be really, <laughs> really dangerous. Okay, seated second today, Dwayne Watkins. Okay, this is our other military entry here. Uh, Dwayne Watkins, PBA member. Um, he defeated another PBA member in the second round of match play in Tracy Nakashima to get right. here. Tell you what, this guy is tough. Uh, I bowled with him last week in a team event. When he gets lined up, he never stops. Well, he likes to bowl on military houses because <laughs> he won over at K-Bay uh, uh, last year. And I, th I tell you, this guy is real dangerous, and uh, I expect a lot, of, a lot out of his game. <laughs> Okay, seated third today, Robert Garcia. Okay, Robert Garcia, left-hander out of Poly Lanes. This guy averaged 230 in the match, but I tell you what, big, powerful lefty. I mean, he, he can cross some boards for a lefty. Well, you know, the left-hander has had a little bit of uh, difficulty today, but he persevered, got through the match play, and he's here on TV, <laughs> and he's dangerous. Okay, seated fourth, Moku Kalaola. Okay, Moku Kalaola. Also averaged 230 in match play. He's the husband of a uh, former Team USA member, Denise Kalaola. Bowls out of Schofield, and, you know, he's a, he's a tough bowler, too. I mean, maybe a little bit of nerves, but I think he can get over it, and he might be the dark horse. Well, you know, he has a thing against Hawaii TV bowling uh, personnel <laughs> because he beat not only myself, but Glenn Azumi and Match Play to get to TV. I, I don't think he likes me more because he bowled <laughs> 240 against me. Okay, seated fifth, Miles Oye. Okay, well, Miles Oye, the left-hander that helped you win a title last That's week. Right. <laughs> you know, he's out of poly lanes. Um, again, another tough lefty. He can throw the big ball, but he can also move outside and play it's pretty straight, too. Well, and he could be dangerous, too, because he is a former tournament of champions winner a couple of years ago. So a little more incentive for him. A little bit more. Okay, seed at six, Ron Shim Jr. Okay, well, Ron Shim, seen him on TV a couple of times. He has two titles. Both of them are doubles titles. He's looking today to win his first singles title. That's right, and he bowled real good knockoff Daniel Miyamoto to get onto TV. So, uh he should be shooting real good today. Okay, today in our Boss Hawaii King of the Hill match, we have reigning king Kevin Achong. Okay, well, Kevin Achong, he's going for win number three in the King of the Hill. Um, you know, he's been tough all year, made a few cuts, made a couple of TV shows, won, you know, won a title. Um, he can overpower the lanes, but I think this is the condition that he likes here. Well, he's won here before. He likes Pearl Harbor Bowling Center, but you know what? He's got a real tough opponent. <laughs> Your teammate from last week again, teammate Miles Oye. Yep, um, Miles Oye. You know, so he he, you know, he gets to bowl the king of the hill match, but even if he loses here, he gets to come back later on during the TV telecast, um, maybe make a few adjustments if he has to, and maybe make a run for the for the, turn, well, uh, the tournament title. Earlier, he was playing outside and qualifying, and during match play, he jumped, played, played an inside line, and he won his two matches, so he might be finding something. Okay, we got a lot of action to come. We'll be right back after these short messages. Today in our Boss Hawaii King of the Hill match, we have reigning King Kevin Achong against Miles Oye. Okay, here we are at Pearl Harbor Bowling Center. Our first match today is our Boss Hawaii King of the Hill match. And up first is Mr. Kevin Achong. Hi, my name is Scott Mitamura, and here with me on my left, from the left side, Scott <laughs> Sayers. Yes, we got Scott on the left and Scott on the right again. Okay, yeah, first look at Kevin Achong. A lot of loft. Oh, big strike. <laughs> and uh, I'm in my familiar position. Behind the mic. Behind the mic. Last week was an aberration. <laughs> you know, people might wonder um, if we actually bowl. And yes, we do actually bowl. It's just um, most of the time we end up back here. Well, we participate. <laughs> Sometimes... We wouldn't want to call it bowling. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's a, here's a first look at Miles Oye, your teammate from last week, the uh, team event. And it comes okay. in high, leaves the solid eight, solid eight pin. Yeah, like you said, you know, he he moved inside um during the qualifying, and it seems like he has a lot better reaction than he did earlier. 
Oh, very versatile bowler because we saw him last week just pointing it off the corner. And he's throwing that same ball, but look, look at his tra trajectory tonight. Or you know, today. This, uh, and he's really hooking the ball. Okay, this is another bowler that also gets a lot of loft into the lanes. You know, much like Kevin O'Chong does. Okay, covers the spare. Yeah, I'm surprised he didn't get back trouble last week. <laughs> From carrying you? He had to carry four others, too. <laughs> We all hopped on the lefty for a ride. And you still insist on cutting down lefties, too. Well, <laughs> they have their purpose in life. <laughs> <laughs> what was it that, uh, that Jason Purdy said? It wasn't for the right-handers, the jackpot would be small. Yeah, that's yeah. true. <laughs> that's true. I know. He sends it out, and the seven pin. Okay, and, and two quality shots there for Miles. Uh, not getting the good break, because um, first frame left an eight pin, and now leaves a solid seven. And taking out another ball for his spare attempt. You notice how he breaks his wrist back uh, in, in a broken position. And no lift, just direction, and you just got to hit that spare. You just got to hit the pin. You don't need um, extra revolutions or anything like that. And that's a good spare tip for the um, young junior bowlers out there. You have a lot of the younger bowlers that just want to want to kind of just grip it and rip it. and um, Grip it and rip it, even for the spare. Yeah. <laughs> As you get older, you get a little wiser. You save energy. Okay, Kevin's ball kind of rolling out. Leaves the 2 4 10. Looks like it was going to come up and then kind of quit on the back end. And kind of look like it looks like he lost it off his hand just a little bit. Um, kind of came kind of came around it and just didn't get the lift on it. Didn't get the wrong um, the good rotation. On it. Hey, Kevin Achong is married. His wife's name is Cheryl. Has a stepson, Sean. Uh, Cheryl, broken foot, Achong. <laughs> and, and, and she actually bowled today, too. And she just missed making yes. the TV show with a broken foot now. That's unreal. He's employed at Fort Shafter in the U.S. Army. Current average of 186. Lifetime high average of 213. High game of 299. Lifetime high series 752. 16 times on TV, three TV titles. Participated in the Wildlife Strike and Spare Club in junior bowling. Bowling coach was Ted Chalk. And, and oh, he <laughs> carries a 10 pin. And I don't know what hit it, but the messenger missed it. Something came out of the pit. Okay, bowling the compliments. Okay. Take a look at the replay here. Here's the replay. Let, let's see what trips the 10. Ball comes in a little late. Oh, it's a okay, six pin. Six pin. Sixpin kind of just gave it a love tap and it <laughs> uh, tilted it enough. Okay, taking a look at uh, Miles' bio sheet. He's married. His wife's name is Laren. Two children, Michael and Ren. Okay, rips the rack. Big strike. He's employed at M... MNS Limited, ABC Stores. He's currently not bowling, but there's a previous lifetime high of 228. He doesn't bowl and he makes a TV show yes. two weeks in a row. Okay. <laughs> uh, high game of 300, high series of 792, nine times on TV, three titles, one of one of which was last week. Bowling accomplishments, he lists city championship, team singles, doubles, and all event, and he's also won the state championship in, the, in those same four events also, so... Uh, very accomplished bowler. I'd like to thank Dan Nakahara and also to Laren, Michael, and Ren for their support. And rips the rack again. Two big strikes, and he's thrown the first double in the match. Okay, right now has a... 21 pin lead 
Kevin's working on a strike. With a double, he can cut that lead down to 11. Okay, he's crossing about the 15 board. Okay, gets the mixer. This one, he this time he picked it up a little more. The ball didn't roll out on him. He had a little more loft. I think he got it out further than he wanted it to, but the ball, because of the extra loft in the lift, he was able to get the ball around the corner. Okay, continuing with uh, Kevin's bio sheet. Bowling accomplishments, he lifts winning three titles, runner-up in the 1995 International Match Game Championship. I'd like to say thanks to his wife Cheryl, his mom, his family, Randy Pay, Derek Lee, Laura Kahn, John Perto, and Malu Golf Club, and Mel, Carla, Augie, Neil, Derek, and the other guys at IAL, also Eric and George. And Kevin gets three in a row. Okay, now he's down by one pin. Comes in late, watch the five pin right into the seven. That's power. Good shot. The light hits here today at Pearl Harbor really carried well. Once again, this is the Boss Hawaii King of the Hill match. And if the challenger Miles Oye wins, he will receive a $50 Boss Hawaii gift certificate. And if Kevin continues on his winning ways, oh, comes up high. A big split for Miles, 4 6. Then Kevin would receive a $150 Boss Hawaii gift certificate. So they can sure add up. I think Boss Hawaii was, was, was glad that Glenn Azumi uh, went to the mainland because. He could not continue. <laughs> and Glenn might have ran up a string of um, King of Hill victories too. Okay, Miles wisely takes one. Okay, right now Miles is down by, let's see, 13 pins now with that split. going into his sixth frame. And speaking of our sponsor for the King of the Hill, Boss Hawaii, they got a really great uh, winter ball sale going on right now. Many different types of balls from many different manufacturers. Okay, there's a big strike for Miles. Yeah, it's limited to stock on hand, so. So get down quick for the um, best selection. Balls from AMF. And take a look at the replay here in Miles. Just 10 in the pit. And balls from AMF, Brunswick, Columbia, Fabal, Storm, Track, and Ebonite. Yeah, go down, see Sauce and the gang down there. Check them out. I'm still trying to get Sauce to show me that, um, that last ball that they have on the uh, commercial there. Oh, the, the real hard one. Yeah. The you long know, ball. Yeah. I, I asked us about that and he said, oh, I don't think you can drill it because it's too hard. It'll drop the dull the bits, huh? Dull the bits. Or, or it, it, it just might, um, you know, turn it into dust. <laughs> <laughs> That's a Wong ball, yes. huh? <laughs> the Wong ball. So we're talking about Darren Wong's yes. head on the commercial. If you don't have the right ball, just grab the Wong ball. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that strike extends his lead. 23 pins after five frames. Can extend to 33. He got it inside the 15, likes it. Five in a row for Kevin Achong. Looks like he was a little, a little stiff in the the opening couple of frames. Now he's really getting loose, yeah. getting getting into the groove. And he looks a lot more relaxed now, getting, getting getting good extension, getting good lift and rotation on the ball. You know, as you mentioned earlier, if Kevin O'Chong wins today, he'll win a $150 gift certificate, and that'll put him in excess of, a, of, of about $300 worth of gift certificates. 
Kim Miles is taking a re-rack. And in Hawaii TV bowling, each bowler is allowed two re-racks -re per game. And if you notice, Miles is a very methodical bowler, sits his hand in the ball. You know, first he checks the pin, sets the hand in the ball. And good concentration. Watch his focus on the, on the target. His eyes never move off his target. And the way out, ball comes in light. The three pin almost got tipped. It should be a routine spare for him, but uh, time is running out in this match here. Spare will give him a 115 in the sixth, and they'll still put him down 33 pins. Okay, so a strike in the eighth frame is real critical. He needs to get it going. And whether he wins or loses, he'll be back on TV. In fact, he'll be back into our very our next, next match. match of our Tournament of Champions, which is sponsored by the Associates. Yeah, you can see the part of the banner right behind oh, Miles. Yeah. The financial, the financial says. <laughs> <laughs> the Associates, financial, this is. And of course, um, Keith Iani, a um, former champion, also bowled today. And big strike. Okay, Miles has a double again. Excuse me, Miles has a strike, spare strike. Didi was writing checks, so. <laughs> okay, Kevin has a five bagger right now going for six. Yeah, during qualifying today, Kevin actually kind of struggled a little bit. Okay, right over the 16 board. Wow, ball takes a left turn <laughs> and it, it hits your side, Scott. And you saw the left blinker go on there for a little bit. But any strike is a good strike. That's what the lefties always say. <laughs> Never made a strike I didn't like. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> you got a point there. And sometimes we get too particular. <laughs> and then, a lot of, you know, a lot of bowlers, they just want to fit it in just right and get the perfect strike every time. But, you know, it never happens. I you tell know. a lot of bowlers, don't start getting particular. Especially when they're, whatever they're doing is working, the Brooklyn. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay, Kevin likes this one. Seven in a row. You know, as I mentioned earlier, Kevin only shot 540 during the um, the qualifying portion of our tournament, but you know, evidently he found something on the TV pair and off like a shot, he has seven in a row. I think he was saving it, and uh, he can go off the sheet for a 268 game. I kind of feel like Miles because when I bowled uh, Moku Kalaola, he he did almost <laughs> the same thing to me, so. Doesn't feel good <laughs> if you're sitting there. And Miles gets a big strike. And the best Miles can finish is a 225 game. So by no means is that poor bowling. Just kind of ran into a buzzsaw with uh, Kevin Achong. Well, you know, in match play, you don't mind getting beaten. You know, and, and in this case, uh, you know, Kevin just put a, a big, big game together. So Kevin really does, doesn't even, he just needs to show up to win this Boss Hawaii King of the Hill match. And solid seven. Okay, that a uh, spare here. We'll put him in the 200s. Uh, definitely a good quality game, though, for Miles. Uh, oh, yeah. 
you know, only missed the pocket once, which is in the fifth frame when he threw the 4 6 split. Looks like he has a fairly good shot. I think he'll have something to work with in, in our next match. In fact, uh, our first TV match here will be the match against Miles Oye against Ron Shim Jr. That'll be our first match of the Tournament of Champions. Okay, Miles finishing up his game. And big strike, 2 4 Looks like Kevin will win this match and go on to bowl the champion of the Tournament of Champions next week over at the Leeward Bowl. And of course, next week is our Hawaii's richest bowling tournament. Okay, Kevin, even with that split, taking eight out. Kevin Achong winning our boss away. King of the Hill match, 230 to Miles Oye, 204. Stay tuned for our first TV match after these messages. Okay, today in our first TV match, we have Miles Oye against Ron Shim Jr. Okay, here we are at Pearl Harbor Bowling Center. This is our first TV match of the Associates Financial Services Tournament of Champions. And once again, Scott on the right. We have Scott on the left. Heidi ho. Heidi ho. Hoody ho. And here we go. <laughs> it's our first match for our Tournament of Champions. And we have Ron Shim Jr. throwing his first shot. Okay, lose a 10 pin. Okay, good opening shot for Ron. You know, this is a real interesting uh, group of bowlers that we have today. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, not your, not the ones you see every week on TV. Yes, and, you know, these are only the, the previous winners of the last 12 months. And, oh, Ron misses the 10 pin in his opening shot. And it, it's not the say that these bowlers are not good bowlers, but we don't see them every week. You know, they're not the Keith Hiani, the Joe Yachman, <laughs> the Lance Kims. Yeah, where they come out week after week. Or the Glenn but... Azumis. <laughs> and, uh, and what's interesting is that a lot of these bowlers are first-time winners, and they made it to TV in the Tournament of Champions. So that's great. Great to see some new faces. Definitely. Okay, Miles is a familiar face because he bowled the last match. And, oh, almost <laughs> leaving the solid eight pin. You know, and he left that in the King of the Hill match on his first shot, and this time got a lot better break. Okay, in our upcoming matches, we have Moku Kalaola next, then Robert Garcia, Dwayne Watkins, and Trey Cummings, our tournament leader. So these four bowlers coming up next have all won their first title this pa oh, this last year. So, uh -huh. very interesting. You know, basically we have here, like, we had 30 bowlers today. Um, 28, um, well, 28 new winners, including, a, um, well, 29, including the Bridesmaid Champion, which is held earlier today. And, and then, speaking of the Bridesmaid, it was uh, none other than Chad Horiuchi. Chad Horiuchi won the Bridesmaid Tournament. And uh, got an entry into the Tournament of Champions, but unfortunately uh, lost in match play. Mm -hmm. And also to top off the um, 30 bowlers that we had today was last year's Tournament of Champions winner, Ken Reynolds. Okay, and sliding by, leaving the 210. Okay, the 210, I saw a lot of these today. Send it out a little too wide and then uh, 
coming behind the head pin there. He's going to try to hook it for the spare and just takes nine. So very shaky start for Ron Shim Jr. He has open, open in the first two frames. And it's not what you want to do against a bowler like Miles Oyer. Okay, we have to wait for the arrows to come up uh, a second. And a uh, kind of scoring error here. Well, why don't we go over some of the our business? Let's go over our international tournament that's coming up over at IAA Bowl, April 4th. And it's a handicap team event uh, with a 975 ceiling. You can be all male, all female, or mixed, and it's handicapped. So you know, the prize fund is pretty great. I mean, and Ron Shim trips the four into the nine. It's a good break. You know, almost a four nine split, but he got the good break. Hit out the nine pin out there last. And so this, you know, if based on 48 teams, a $2,000 uh, first place, that's that's not shabby at all. And squad times will be 5 p.m. and 8.30 p.m. April 4th. And then we have uh, Handicap Foursome also on April 4th, uh, 11 a.m. and 2 p.m. And that's also part of the International Bowling Classic over at IAEA Bowl. And then it's all being wrapped up by the match game event. Okay, way outside. Wow. That match game event is on April 5th, Sunday. And that starts at 8.30 a.m. And that pays, listen to this, first place $2,500 based on 96 entries. So, you know, what I like about this tournament is that you get a lot of the top players from Japan coming in from the daily sports. So... A long-standing tournament. I don't know how long uh, uh, Mako's been running this tournament, but uh, it's a good one. And, uh, you know, they bring some of these really neat trophies from Japan back. <laughs> I mean, really outstanding. But uh, keep that weekend open, bowlers. April 4th and 5th, you're going to have the International Bowling Classic over at IA Bowl. Okay, Miles always starts out with a double and then a spare. Yeah, and during qualifying today, Miles Oye shot games of 245, 180, 173 for a 598 series. In his first round of match play, he defeated Chad Horiuchi in a tight match, 216 to 213. And then Chad was the co tournament leader. Co tournament leader. And then he defeated Cheryl LaChong with the broken foot. Broken foot. 191 to 180. Is, is that is does her name sound like how she walks? A chung, a chung, a chung, a chung. The broke. I saw her limping around, and then I couldn't believe that she bowled. Yeah, that, that, that's something to bowl. You know, to bowl in a little bit of pain, but I, you know, I can I, only imagine what a broken foot feels yeah. like. And, and it's, it's also her sliding foot. So. Right. But she almost made it to TV. I, I was actually hoping that she would, so we could. We could tease her about it, <laughs> but well, we managed. Well, you would tease her. About well, it. we managed to slip it in anyway. So, <laughs> okay, Miles Oye gets a spare. And yeah, Miles Oye had a five-game qualifying series of 10:05, and placed him in the number five position for TV. Okay, Ron Shim needs to get something going early. Uh, started out with two open frames and a strike up. Let's see if he can double. And he does. And he does. Hey, Ron Shim Jr. in qualifying for games of 204, 168, and 212 for a 584 series. First round of match play defeated Mel Iha, 198 to 193. And defeated Daniel Miyamoto, 188 to 148. And that gave him 970 for five games and put him in the number six position. You know, he said that his bowlers gave him the matches and... Uh, he bowled some pretty tough bowlers. I mean, Mel Iha and Daniel Miyamoto to get here. So uh, there's a big strike three in a row. I'm sure they didn't give him the match because when you're bowling uh, tournament champions and nobody gives you nothing, you know, uh, that, that's a prestigious title. I think people are pressing in this tournament and 
you know, to be Mel Eha and Daniel Miyamoto in the same day, that that's a good day. A very good day. So Ron Shim has really closed the lead of Miles Oye down to just six pins with the with the three bagger. Only six pins down. And Miles gets a big strike. Okay, he has a strike up. He, he throws another one. He can extend his lead to 16 pins. Let's see if Miles can get his double here. Okay, a lot of loft. Oh, oh and there's a solid eight. <laughs> eight pin again. <laughs> this time on lane five. Okay, and once again, to go over what we had today, we had 30 bowlers in the Tournament of Champions, 29 previous winners, including a, including the Bridesmaid winner, which um, was a qualifying tournament um, earlier today in the morning and we also had last year's tournament of champions winner Ken Reynolds which uh, rounded out the field to 30 bowlers you know basically we actually had what 30 34 winners actually yeah we had a backs of 34 uh, new champions uh, this past year and of course I think we had four repeats so we had 30 bowlers show up we had a few bowlers that couldn't make it um, due to either uh, traveling on the mainland or for other reasons. I was hoping a couple of my teammates would be here, Ed Lee and Mark Nishimoto from last week, but uh, I hope Ed's all right. He said he was going to come down. And Mark had to fly away to Reno, so. Okay, Ron Shims, and he got out wide, leaves a one, two, four. So his string of three in a row ends. Okay, looking at uh, Ronald Chin's bio sheet, he's not married. He has a daughter, Cassie Pasco, five years old. He has a current average and a lifetime high average of 189. High game of 290. Lifetime high series of 769. He's been on TV four times, won two titles. Currently bowls in the Leeward Aloha Mix, which is on Saturday nights at Leeward Bowl. And also in the Schofield YPO Mixed. Bowling accomplishments, he lists one mixed doubles title and one open doubles title. Now that's a pretty good TV ratio. Two, uh, four times on TV, two titles. 50%. That's, I wish I could have those ratios. And look at that. Look <laughs> at that carry. The 10-pin did the weevil wobble and fell backwards <laughs> onto the 6-pin. Big, big break. Okay, Ron Shim would like to say thanks to Lord Jesus. John Perto for coaching him. His sponsor, Eleanor Shim. Grandfather, John Mele. And most of all, to his daughter, Cassie Pasco. He wants to pass on that. He loves you he loves you very much and always will. And also to Millie Perto and Pearl Harbor Bowling Management. Wow, oh, great. Okay, Miles Oye coming up. The open frame by Ron Shim Jr. in the sixth frame. Has a 21 pin lead. Okay, swinging the 13 board. Comes in light. And the head pin came off the sideboard. Uh, knocked out the six pin, but see, I don't know what happened to the five and the ten. Yeah, that's it's a really bad break, actually. I mean, light hit, but it looked like he had enough power to. At least knock one of them out of there. Oh, he had the power. It's just how the pin came off the sideboard. Okay, now, how would you pick this 5-10 uh, split up, Scott? Okay, for myself, I would stand about three to four board to right with my feet and just go over around the same target. Like that? Like that. Well, I think he was listening to you. <laughs> you know, you left-handers really, maybe it's telepathy or something, you know. <laughs> So that was an important conversion because it, he retains his uh, his lead. 
fact, his lead dropped down to 19 pins now. But remember, Ron Shim Jr. has a strike up in the seventh frame. That was a real clutch pickup, though. And that's how you get on TV. Besides just sitting here behind the mic. Well, that doesn't count. <laughs> Sucks I've been counting those. Yeah, and there's oh a solid God. nine pin. And this Miles just can't believe it. What's going on here? I mean, those are just solid, solid shots, you know? I mean, now, what do you do for that? You know, you, you can't throw it any better than what Miles threw it on, on the last two balls on lane five. I mean. So what do you do? What would you suggest? Don't throw it as good? <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe one want to throw it a little bit lighter or something. But lighter in the pocket? Yes. Maybe. I think a lighter ball. Because his ball is just hitting so hard. You know, it's one thing, though. You know, a, lot, a lot of bowlers that have a lot of power... Um, a lot of them have gone down to lighter weight balls because of the fact that, um, you know, the 16-pound equipment tends to hit too hard for a lot of these guys that can re they can really get on and put a lot of fingers into the ball. Do you suggest I go to a 15-pound ball? And with your power, you might have to go down to a 12-pound ball. Okay, Ron Shim, swinging the 15. Good strike. That's a double for Ron Shim Jr. Okay, that's going to cut the lead down here. Okay, with another strike here. Look at how this match has turned around. Another strike here. You can actually take the lead. Ball comes in high, trips the 4 7. Three bagger for Ron Shim Jr. Okay, and this match just got a heck of a lot tighter right there. Okay, Miles. Miles got to get to work now. Come, come up in the ninth frame. Robert Garcia right behind us. Giving us a neck rub. <laughs> He's going to make me fall asleep. <laughs> Same here. We might have to get the, um, two other announcers to get on here. Come a stretcher. Okay, Miles coming up in a critical ninth frame. Key strike here. And, and, and let's see how he comes back after you know two really bad breaks in lane five. Okay, crossing the 15 oh, at solid seven now. He's pretty much, well, all he has to do is leave the the 10 pin and leave the whole back row <laughs> but, I, but maybe I shouldn't have said that <laughs> well he needs to pick up the spare and uh, he can finish with a 2-10 game if he gets 3 strikes in the 10 that'll force Rod Shin to mark ok covers the spare You know, it's amazing how a match can turn around in the blink of an eye. This match sure had. Uh, it looked like uh, Miles was just in total control when Ron Shim Jr. opened up with two open frames and Miles came out with a double. What a difference a frame can make. Definitely. You know, and, and even with three opens, I mean, Ron is in position to take the lead here. Basically, it's three opens and six strikes. Okay, there's a strike you wanted. First strike in the tenth. Gives them a 180 in the ninth frame. 
can finish with a possible 210. Okay, coming up in our next match, Glenn Azumi's and my nemesis, Moku Kalaola. <laughs> I think Moku really disliked me because he didn't even give me a chance. Shot 245 against you. See ya. <laughs> Wouldn't want to be ya. I mean, he, you know, Moku just went on a, on a tear in match play. He averaged over 230. And Miles gets the mixing strike, gets a big double. Another strike will give him a 210. Okay, right now, uh, looks like Ron Shim will have to throw the first strike. That strike was real big. And cone here is still pretty important also. Yeah, I would strongly advise taking a good pin count here. Sends it out. And, and another nine pin. pin. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch. What are you gonna do? What do you do for those? I mean he left an eight pin and two solid nines. All on lane five. He left two eight pins. Well, you know, the eight oh. was in the King of the Hill match. Right. Oh, you're just counting this match. Yes. Incredible. These reactive balls just hit so hard. Okay, this is the shot that Ron Shim needs right here. Okay, this is for the match here. He sends it out and carries a strike. Trips that 10 pin. Okay, this needs to keep the ball on the lane. Well, what a comeback. What a Big comeback. comeback. I mean, three open frames in the first six frames and still turns around and wins a match. Oh, he was able to bunch his strikes together, and that's the key. And goes over and gets the Brooklyn. Let's look here, he's got three in a row, third, fourth, fifth frame. And he's struck from the seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh frame. So that is a comeback. Okay, in our next match, we have Moku Kalaola coming up. And what a finish. What a finish. Okay, our first TV match. Winner, Ron Shim Jr., 223 over Miles Oye, 209. Stay tuned for our second TV match after these messages. Recapping our action in our first TV match, Ronald Chim Jr. 223 over Miles Oye 209. In our second TV match, we have Ronald Chim Jr. against Moku Kalaola. Okay, welcome back to Pearl Harbor Lanes for the Associates Financial Services Tournament of Champions. I am Scott Sears in the lead, and doing the color for me is Rob Troy Mishiro. How's it going, Scott? <laughs> we are taking our first look here at Moku Kalaola. Hey, good opening shot. What a shot. What a shot. Right over the second arrow, going out just about I mean, seven, six or seven board. Brings it back really nice. Looks like he's lined up already. And okay, the winner of our previous match, Ronald Shim Jr. coming up on his first shot. Game number two. Okay, he sends it way out. And he gets it around and gets a big mixing strike. Now 
And I'll tell you, Ron made a, made a really big comeback in that first game. Take a look at our replay here. And just kicking out the five pin. You know, but Ron made a really big comeback, comeback in the first uh, first game as he had three opens in the first six frames and closed it out with, um, with six consecutive strikes. That was a good match. Went down to the last frame again. Okay, and it comes up a little light. This leaves a two, four, five, eight bucket. Tricky spare here. You know, and today we had a lot of matches that went down to the last frame. Uh, first game so far was no exception to that. That's kind of actually we're going to have all day today. Definitely. That 710 was a sore one, man. <laughs> what was funny was it felt like that was the best ball I threw and never fails. And that was in the Bridesmaid uh, tournament, uh, which was held earlier this morning. Uh, you voted against Dusty Yoshishige. As Jason Purdy would say, the solid taps. Same thing with Chad Horiuchi. <laughs> Let the ball go. Said it felt good off his hand and left the 10. Okay, Moku coming up in the second frame, working on a strike. Sends it out again. And big double. That's going to be the key today is who can carry. Okay, and Moku already out to a 10 pin lead. Let's see if he can come up with another strike here on lane five. Sends it out, coming up light. Okay, he got a little bit of a break there. You can see um, right when he was releasing the ball, he kind of stood up on the shot a little bit. Uh, he didn't, didn't get the good lift and didn't get the good extension through the ball. Today, Moku had games of 218, 217, and 167 for a series of 602. First match play challenge Scott Me tomorrow, 245 to 202. Second match play challenge Glenn Azumi, 215 to 214. Tough match. Which qualified him fourth for TV. Damn, Moku averaged, what, 230 in match play, so. Caught on fire in uh, the two games of match play that we had. I guess he just wants to get all these committee members <laughs> out, huh? He's like, yeah, these TV, these TV guys are always getting behind the mic anyway, so they don't have to bowl. Okay, and Ron Shem leaves a 10-pin. Well, Scott, that just leaves you and me. Because Glenn and Scott made them on TV this past season. So we have to take our turn next season. Hopefully. Leave them behind the mics and we'll be out there bowling. Like I was telling you before, it's been a long winter for me, man. <laughs> it's been all winter for me. <laughs> all winter, huh? Okay, spare conversion for Ron Shim. And that gives Ron 39 in the, in the second frame. Spare up in a third frame. Strike here and um, still trail by 10 pins. A li little bit of an unorthodox style with Ron as in his approach, um, kind of faces out towards the right lane. And comes a little high, leaves a 4-7. He kind of faces his body towards the right, and as he goes through his approach, he kind of squares up his body. Okay, let's see if he can convert the spare here. 
Okay, covering to spare. Okay, coming up on lane six, Moku Kalaolo. He's married, his wife's name is Dee. He's employed by Grace Pacific as a truck driver. Current average 190, lifetime high average 190. I think he's being a little modest there. Definitely. Lifetime high gain 286, lifetime high series 690. Two times on TV, he has one title. Current league is at Schofield. Bowling accomplishments, mixed doubles champion at Schofield. Uh, he'd like to thank his loving wife, Dee, for all her support. Also to Keith Yane and Hawaii TV Bowling for sponsoring the tournament. And to Precision 300, Larry Scott Dayton. Much mahalo. <laughs> you famous, are you? <laughs> Only because I'm behind the mic. Good up, man. Yeah, well, you know, we're fortunate enough to be able to drill both Moku and Denise's um, equipment. Yeah, they're real fun to be around. Yeah, and almost got a break there. Almost was able to kick the three pin out and, and knock out the seven. Open frame in the fourth gives him a 74 in the fourth frame. Now trails by three pins. Yeah, so once again, we have a very tight match going on here. Okay, and on March 21st, 1998, Leary Bowl will be holding the Friends for Cindy De Castro Benefit Bone Marrow Transplant No Tap Handicap Tournament. And it's a singles event. It's going to be two shifts, 12 noon and 3 p.m. Entry deadline is March 7th. Entry fee is $50 per bowler. And then it's going to be a bunch of... Um, bunch of prizes uh, that are going to be given away during that tournament a lot of uh, a lot of raffle drawings many of the major ball manufacturers um, from from the states have uh, donated equipment and also a lot of local sponsors have also donated a lot of things so be sure to check that out again that's the friends for Cindy de castro benefit bone marrow transplant no tap handicap tournament march 21st 1998 Let's get out there and show some support. A 10-pin conversion in the fifth frame from Moku Kalaola. You run him coming up in the fifth frame. He's leading by three pins right now. Okay. Gets another big mixing strike. He got that one kind of far out. Got it way out. <laughs> Had enough power to bring it back. Right here, and he can extend his lead to 13 pins. And you can kind of see behind um, Ron's right shoulder that uh, beautiful art and signs um, banner. Some people that you're very familiar with. Yeah, I'd like to thank uh, April and Noli for the for the banners. They're one of our new sponsors. Yeah, and a big crossover strike for Ron Shim. Extends his lead to 13 pins, and take a look at the replay there. See the ball turning right there. Brooklyn. Who's this testing your pocket, Scott? Yeah, it's like I told uh, Scott to meet somewhere earlier. I've never met a strike that I didn't like. <laughs> they all look good as long as they're X's. <laughs> Definitely. Okay, and 10 pin. You know, Moku's throwing some, some pretty good shots out there, just not, not quite getting the breaks for him. That was my enemy today. Yeah, the 10 pin. <laughs> Stop I, yeah, I saw you leave a few of those in the um, right to me. Okay, and takes out a hard plastic ball, converts to 10 pin. No, just when I thought I was floating off the, the air just got released. <laughs> <laughs> Had a hole in the balloon. Definitely. Okay, Spare gives uh, Moku Kalaola 93 in the fifth frame. Spare up in the sixth. And 
Basically, he just needs to get going because right now Ron Shim with the strike in the seventh can take a 23-pin lead. Excuse me, 24-pin lead. Moko's been throwing the ball real good lately. He's been working on his game. Again, gets a high strike, trips out the four pin. Yeah, that's a good break for Moku. Today, I think that was a better shot to go a little high. There's a hey, replay. Take a look at this. You see the ball start turning, hits high flush. And it's... it's like Tripping the, it out. It's like the two pin that came off the sideboard there, kicked out the four pin. Okay, and 10 in the pit. Really good shot for Ron Shim right there. And with that, Ron extends his lead to 24 pins. He's pretty much locked in there. You know, from the first game, you know, he punched out to, you know, finish up a good game. And he's going at it again. Okay, and gets another solid strike. You have a replay here. Can't throw it any better than that. All 10 in the pit. All 10 in the pit. Hopefully, Scott, next year we're going to be here. Yeah? <laughs> Bowling. Bowling. Not talking. Okay, inside a target, crosses yeah. over. He gets a Brooklyn strike. Okay, so he gets a break. Yeah, Moku says, I can play Scott's line too. <laughs> okay, and once again, I uh, got the in International Bowling Classic to be held at IA Bowl. They got the Handicap 975 team event, April 4th, 1998. Also got a mixed team event, which is a foursome that, to be held also on April 4th, 1998. And of course, the International Bowling Classic Match Game event to be held Sunday, uh -oh. April 5th, 1998 at 8.30 a.m. Okay, Moku leaving a window there. See if we can convert this. You know, what, what would you do, what would you do to convert to convert a spare like this? Play it from the left hand side. You go all the way left and throw it straight. Okay, Moku's going right. He's going to hook it over and you know threw a really good shot there, and the head pin just wrapped around the, the ten pin. And a bad break there from Moku Kalaolo. That spare is very tricky. Okay, take a look at the replay here, and I'll watch the head pin just wrap right around the ten pin. You know, tough break there. And that gives Moku Kalaola a 167 in the ninth frame. The best he can do is 197. And Ron Shim is going at a 207 pace. So it's still kind of anybody's match, but um, as long as Ron stays clean, he'll be in good shape. And gets a little, little out and leaves a 1-2-4. Kind of looked a little fast with the feet there. Just a little fast. Excuse me, Ron Shim is going at a 224 pace now. Hey, with that mark. Yeah, that basically puts the match away. Think he's going to try and find something else? Uh, he might experiment a little bit, but um, seems to have a pretty good shot where he's at right now. Uh, you know, as long as he. As long as he takes his time with the approach and you know, kind of, you know, keeps his keeps his body down and into the shot, and he has a really good reaction out there right now, just like that shot right there. Okay, 
Okay, but a good showing today for Moku Kalaola. Now we're going to see him back in the future. Of course, he and his wife Denise were the uh, mixed doubles champions. Denise Kalaola, former member of um, Team USA. And in our upcoming match, we'll see powerful lefty Robert Garcia. Okay, if he throws another strike here, he's going to finish up with a 234. Well, like you said, Scott, good showing by Moku. He's been throwing the ball real good. He'll be back. Definitely. You know, basically, you know, Ron Shim has, you know, he's thrown the strikes when he's needed to, which is in the end of the game. And, and that's the key here at Pearl Harbor. You know, you've got to put the string together and pray that you don't get any taps. <laughs> Okay, so with the strike there, Ron Shim Jr. finishes with a 234. And I see if Moko can go out like a champ here. Finish with three strikes for a 197. Okay, and there's a there's a reaction that he wanted. It never fails, of course. When you don't need it, you, you always strike. get it. Seems like you're just so much more relaxed that you know the ball, the ball does everything that you want it to do. And leaves another solid 10 pin. And with the spare, he'll finish with 187. How's that ball? Glittering on. Glitter ball. Okay, and with the spare conversion, final score for our second TV match Ron Shim Jr., 234 over Moku Kalaola, 187. And we'll be back with our third, third TV match right after these important messages. recap the action in our first TV match Ron Shim Jr. 223 over Miles Oye 209 in our second TV match Ron Shim Jr. 234 over Moku Kalaola 187 in our third TV match we have Ron Shim Jr. against Robert Garcia okay hello and welcome back again to Pearl Harbor Bowling Center as we are here for the Associates Financial Services Tournament of Champions. Okay, Scott Sears and again with me is Troy Miyashiro. And up in the first frame we have Ron Shim Jr. Okay, and Ron starts off with a strike. And joining us in the scorekeeping duties is Didi Yoshishige, who just came with, um, let's see, onion rings and it's like a grilled cheese sandwich. Well, I eat. <laughs> and here's a replay of Ron's shot. Solid hit. Sorry, Scott, I'll be back. I'll go to March. <laughs> okay, coming up here in lane six, Robert Garcia. Okay, now this guy's a powerful lefty here. Okay, he comes up high. He's a big four, though. Four, six, seven, ten. You know, kind of basically the way the matches have gone is, you know, Ron... Ron really hasn't gotten into a whole lot of trouble except in the first game. But, um, you know, it's been his opponents who have either not been able to carry or have made the mistakes later on in the game that have... Um, you know, helped Ron to make comebacks and win his matches. Well, that's usually how it goes in match play. Yeah. It's, you know, you just stay clean and, you know, usually you get some breaks in between. We know this guy can strike. Oh, definitely. This guy is very he smooth. Throws a big ball. Okay, sings a way out. Comes back. Solid strike. So effortless. He's got a good knee bend. Mm -hmm. Throws the ball, the ball very well. And throws it with a lot of power, too. And he kind of has a bent elbow. You see the replay here. Look how much revs that ball got. And it's about 10 in the, the last 15 feet. <laughs> I don't even throw 10 throughout the whole lane. <laughs> 
Okay, Ron Shim coming up in second frame. Strike up in the first. And comes a little light and leaves a two, four, and five. I don't know if you noticed, Scott, but watch watch Ron when he goes up. He gives himself the okay to go. You know, he nods his head. When he's not ready, he shakes his head. <laughs> so you know he's concentrating very good. Getting himself set, yeah. Okay, and good cover. And gives him 20 in the first. Yeah, strike in a third frame, and he will take a three-pin lead. Okay, pulls it inside. Okay, goes way over. And he leaves the one, three, six, and nine. Okay, and basically all you want to do here is just um, line up as you would your regular strike shot and hit the the one, three pocket, and should pick up the spare. She's teasing us over there. <laughs> Okay, perfect conversion. He wanted that on his first ball. Okay, let's see what kind of adjustment Robert makes here on lane six. You know, very important here because if Robert doubles here in uh, the third and fourth frames, he can take a one pin lead. No, during practice, he was having a hard time on lane six. Okay, he's inside a little bit. And leaves a two four seven. And so far it's holding true because lane six has come up high twice. And he takes out a hard plastic ball now. Throw with a little more speed. Hooks it into the spare and chops the two off of the four seven. It's a big mistake there for Robert. It's not like Robert. Usually he's, you know, pretty clean throughout his game. Makes very little mistakes. Okay, well, he needs to get going now. As right now he's trailing by 23 pins. We all know these guys are capable of going off the sheet. You know, they're true champions. Okay, and he's a solid seven. Okay, that was kind of the problem that Miles Oye was having too. I mean, he couldn't couldn't carry the corners, and of course, he left his share of um, eights and nines. <laughs> I heard about it. I didn't see it, but I heard about it. I mean, he couldn't throw it any better than what he threw it in. You know, to, to leave those uh, eights and nines is uh, pretty disheartening. You know, when that guy throws, it's hard to believe that anything stands on him. Okay, coming back up on lane six is Ron Shim. Okay, and next week, March 15th, to close the uh, winter um, the winter season of Hawaii TV Bowling, we will be holding the 11th annual Hawaii's Richest Bowling Tournament. Entry fee is $175. Uh, it's um, basically a single game match play elimination format. And on Saturday, the day before the HRBT, we will be also holding two game sweepers, one at 1 o'clock and the other at 3 o'clock. So get your entries in early. I understand Frank Beach still has a few openings left, but um, I'm sure they're going to close pretty quick. If you have any questions, you can call Frank at 672-3826. Got your slot yet, Scott? Not yet. Hopefully we'll be able to um, get one in before it closes up. How about you? Still debating. <laughs> OK, 
an open frame there. Gives Ron Jim a 63 in the fourth frame. Okay, and goes high again. This time leaves the three and the six. So it seems that the leads are kind of going through a bit of a transition now. You know, I don't know if it's the, the heads are just drying up a lot or you know, well, carrying down and kind of playing playing some tricks with the break point there, but uh, definitely not the same pace that we've been experiencing in the last couple of matches. Well, here at Pearl Harbor Lanes, usually it gets a little faster rather than slower. Usually you got to move your feet right, move your target right. So that's, you know, that could be happening right now. Let's see if Robert can put one together on lane six. It looks like he's standing a little further right, getting it out a little bit more. And good adjustment. There you go. Okay, Robert is married. His wife's name is Danita. Uh, he has two children, Gavin and Sean Kay. He's employed by Jade Painting as a painter. Current average, 212. Lifetime high average, 212. He has one 300 game. Lifetime high, um, high series is 814. Uh, he's been on TV four times. He has one title. Currently participating in the Monday Night League at Pully Lanes. Bowling accomplishment, he has 300, 297, 797 series, 814. Uh, one title, he won the city tournament in 1987. He'd like to thank his wife, Danita, and his kids, Gavin and Shante, for supporting him through his bowling career. Oh, a lot of accomplishments there for Robert Garcia. Okay, and slides by and then, you know, he, he was in the gutter about um, well, about a good eight feet before the pins. So. An unfortunate break for Robert Garcia and gives him 81 in the sixth frame. Okay, Ron comes up and again leaves the 247, excuse me, 245. Yeah, having a little bit of a scoring problem here, as you can see Didi up at the um, the council up there. You better snake her food now, she no stay. <laughs> oh, chopping the spare. Okay. And that can be a big open there as he chops the two and the five, two and the four off of the five. Again, he comes up high and leaves the 6-10 this time. Okay, like you said, Scott, lanes could be changing. Conversion. It's not over yet, Scott. It's a very, you know, still a tight match. Uh, not a very high-scoring match, but both bowlers are still in it. You know, Robert. Robert needs to get going now because you know, with a double here, he can actually take a two-pin lead. This is one guy I wouldn't give an open to. Very deadly. I don't want to fall behind too far against him. Okay, and gets it way out and gets a really good shot. Big strike for Robert Garcia. Okay, it looks like he's lined up now on lane six. Okay, Here's a replay. And you, see, you see how far out he got that ball there. And puts all ten in the pit. We have to go over a raffle drawing at this time. We have two target zone bowling balls, one cross pen set, and one see-through calculator, all donated by Keith Hiani of the Associates Financial Services. So one pair of UH men's volleyball tickets. 
uh, which is on March 27th versus Stanford, donated by Western ID Luchito. One $50 spring calling card and two Pro Bowl mesh beach bags with keychain and magnet, donated by Bradley and Brian Doy. One Tour Shine Plus bowling ball polisher, donated by Miles Miyahara of Designer Golf and Bowling Supply. Also, one gift certificate for haircut, shampoo, and style, donated by Karen Bunny Mitamura of Simply Hair. One Gold Coast embroidered hat, donated by Al Lyman of Lyman Travel and Tours. And of course, the ever famous Lenazumi Hanafuda Pogs. Got two sets of those to give away. Okay, an opening there by Ron Shin gives him 115 in the eighth frame. His opponent, Robert Garcia, has a double in the seventh and eighth frames. And again, coming high, this time leaving the three, six, and nine. You know, it seems all of a sudden the lanes kind of changed for Ron and just wasn't able to make the adjustments uh, you know, quick enough. And another open frame, and that gives him a 124 in the ninth frame. And basically all um, Robert Garcia has to do here, Troy, is just show up, stay clean, stay behind the foul line, and he'll go on to our semifinal match. Okay, and oh, he's a Greek church now. Looks like he put more speed on the ball, but didn't get it out as far. Okay, today Robert had games of 237, 179, 216 for a series of 632. First match play, he challenged Keith Yane, 203 to 181. Second match play, he challenged Denise Kalaola, 257 to 192 for a series of 1092. Okay, so now right now, still not over. Scott. It's still not over. Um, right now, Robert Garcia has a 132 in the ninth frame. Ron Shim Jr. has a 124 in the ninth frame. So, so an eight-pin differential here. So basically, here if Robert doubles, the, the match is in hand. If he if he goes spare strike or strike spare. Uh, Ron Shim still has a chance to come up in the 10th frame and take the match. Okay, and there's one. Okay, and this shot here is for the match. See the replay here getting you way out again. And the four just trips out the 7th pin. What do you think, Troy? He's going to throw with a lot more speed and a lot more hit. He's going to go with more speed. He's going to stay firm on it. This is for the match. Okay, gets it out and comes high. Oh, and this time leaves the 2 4 6 10. Now, this is a pretty unusual um, split here. And Robert's going to go for it. Um, I'm going to hit the 2 pin on the left side and try to deflect it into the 6-10. That still forces Ron to throw 2 in the 10. Okay, and with that, Robert Garcia finishes with a 150. And as you said, Ron, Ron Shim still needs to come up in the 10th frame and double. Oh, wow, I, I think... Ron thought he was out of it already. But you know what? It's not over till it's over. Nope. Especially in match play. I had that happen to me in my first tournament of champions against Larry Koizumi. Went down to the 10th frame. <laughs> okay, and he goes high, leaves a 6-10, and that's basically the match right there. Robert Garcia will go on to our semifinal match. And he will face PBA member Dwayne Watkins. Okay, good showing by Ron. 
Okay, and with that, our final score for our match, Robert Garcia, 150 over Ronald Shim Jr., 133. And we'll be back with our semifinal match right after these important messages. Recapping our action, in our first TV match, Ron Shim Jr., 223 over Miles Oye, 209. In our second TV match, Ron Shim Jr., 234 over Moku Kalaola, 187. In our third TV match, Robert Garcia, 150 over Ron Shim Jr., 133. In our semifinal match, we have Robert Garcia against Dwayne Watkins. And once again, welcome back to Pearl Harbor Lanes for the Associates Financial Services Tournament of Champions. Once again, I'm Scott Sears, and with me again is Troy Miyashiro. We're back. <laughs> okay, Robert Garcia coming up in the first frame. Yeah, he just comment, commented to me outside, how's that winning with the 150? <laughs> well, you know, that happens in match play sometimes, and... Yeah, I'll take it. Hey, it comes in a little light and leaves his six pin. It's never over till it's over. Especially in match play, you always need to go 100% at all times. And hooks it and almost hooks by the, by the six pin. I don't think you really expected that there. Okay, we're getting our first look here at Dwayne Watkins. PBA member. Also my teammate from last week uh, during a, the team event. You know, this, this guy is tough. He makes his presence known. He's been here just a while and you know, he's been on TV four times already. Four times? He has a title already. And comes up and leaves a 10 pin. In fact, the first time I seen him, he made a TV. And that was here. Yes. And spare conversion. And we have an all even match here. But this guy is tough. He's Mr. Intensity also. <laughs> uh, gives Glenn Jacinto a run as far as um, hand slapping is concerned. We'll call him the fly. <laughs> okay, he comes high and got a break there. Comes up high, almost leaves a 4-9 and was able to get both of them out there. He also got the fly. You heard him? <laughs> Okay, Robert Garcia on lane six. He needs to strike to stay even. So now we got the mosquito and we got the fly. <laughs> okay, and comes up high again. He's a four six ten. Well, like I was telling you earlier, Scott, lane six was giving him problems during practice ball. And it seems like he's still searching for it. Okay, takes a nine count, gives him 26 in the second frame. Okay, the loser of this game it's a purse of $1,098. And a really good prize fund here for the Tournament of Champions. You know, I can imagine winning a TV title is one thing, but when you can become the winner of the Tournament of Champions, you know, that's when you know you've beaten, in this particular case here, 29 other champions. Very prestigious. And very prestigious title. I'm waiting for that day. <laughs> I'm just waiting to get on TV bowling. 
How's about we make a bet for next season? Let's bet for lunch. First guy to make it on TV. <laughs> okay. How does that sound? That sounds good to me. A little bit of a, a gentleman's bet here. <laughs> Can't back out now. Everybody hurry. And there you have it, folks. Between Troy and me, sure and myself, whoever makes TV first gets lunch from the other. I can taste that steak already. <laughs> okay, swinging it out, comes up, and just kicks out the seven pin. What would be fun is we meet each other, match play, and you knock me out <laughs> to get on TV. Now that would be a lot more sweeter, too. I won't hear the end of it. <laughs> Okay, Dwayne has a double working in the second and third frame. Coming up in the fourth, he can take a 24-pin lead here. And there it is. Okay, getting that fly on lane five. <laughs> yeah, at the time I'd like to go over the top 24. Let's take a look at the replay here. And that was a really solid shot. Okay. In qualifying, tied for first and second with the 713 series, Chad Horiuchi and Glenn Jacinto. Chad had games of 254, 268, and 191. And Robert kicks out the six pin. And Glenn Jacinto had games of 235, 263, 215. Both were 713s. Dennis August qualified third, 708. Tracy Nakashima from Hilo, 689. Dwayne Watkins, who's up here, 688. Trey Cummings, our tournament leader, 680. Daniel Miyamoto, 678. Eric Yuki, 664. Glenn Azumi, 662. Rondo Timbo, 657. Okay, tournament director, six, Scott Mitamura, 654. Lance Kim, 651. Mr. 800, Mel Dagdag, 640. Cheryl Lachong, 638. Robert Garcia, who's also in this match, 632. 16th, Frank Pagano, 627. 17th, Denise Kalaola, 616. Joe Yachman Jr. coming off a back injury, 611. Mel Ihan, 19th, 606. Keith Yanni, 605. Moku Kalaola, 602. Miles Oyes, excuse me, 598. Ken Reynolds, 588. And rounding up the top 24, Ron Shim Jr., 584. Okay, Ron Shim was, you know, 24th qualifier, and he made it to TV. Made it to TV, uh, won two matches. Just like the bridesmaid, uh, Dusty Yoshishige was, you know, our last qualifier, and, you know, he made it to the finals. And, you know, Chad Horiuchi, which was tied for first with a 7-13, he was the winner of the bridesmaids tournament. So Chad, Chad just about made um made all that he could out of that out of that chance there. Okay, today Dwayne had games of 205, 246, 237 for a series of 688. First match play, he challenged Frank Bogano, 190 to 172. Second match play, he challenged Tracy Nakashima, 236 to 202. No, during that match play, Tracy was, you know, stringing him, and he let one out. Solid A-10. He talked to me after. He said, boy, did that hurt. Yeah, and you know, he said he felt like that was one of the better shots that he threw. And, you know, just really bad break there. Okay, Robert getting it way out and gets a good strike. Gives him a three-bagger right now. Okay, looks like he found something there. Okay, yeah, take a look at the replay now. Out about the fifth board, brings it back in, 10 in the pit. Looks like he's getting it more out with more speed. It looks like he's waiting for the ball just a little bit because I've noticed when, when he's gone high, looks like he's kind of jumped on it a little bit too quick and kind of came over the ball a lot earlier than he wanted to. He's trailing by 13 pins. Okay, and that gives him four in a row right now. Yeah, take a look at a replay. 
just like the last shot. Okay, Dwayne is married. His wife's name is Cheryl. He has two children, Dustin and Cody. He's employed by the U.S. Army. Current average 203, lifetime high average 227. 16 300 games, four 800 series, lifetime high series 835, four times on TV, one title. He's currently participating in a Thursday night men's, I'm not sure where. Uh, I think Schofield, I think. Schofield? Okay, bowling accomplishments. 1997 K Bay winner, that's why he's here today. Second place ABC Nationals, all events with a 2211 series and an 813 series. He's been a PBA member since 1989, Bowler of the Year 1994, finished third all-military tournament in Las Vegas. Um, he's been, he finished 14th in the IL PBA Regionals with a 300 game. He'd like to thank his wife, his parents, Mr. Parsons at Ann's Place, a restaurant in Ohio, and, you know, for sponsoring him throughout the season. Hawaii TV Bowling and staff members for the job well done. Keith Yanni from Associates Financial Services for sponsoring the tournament. You know, without these guys sponsoring the tournaments, we wouldn't be here today. Definitely. And, and again, I'd like to thank Keith Yanni for, and Associates for sponsoring our Tournament of Champions here. You know, they've, they've definitely become really big sponsors for our tournament here. Next time you see Keith, tell him thanks. Okay, Robert Garcia coming up, working on four in a row. Coming up in the eighth frame. Okay, gets it out again. And another another strike, ten in the pit, five in a row. Okay, looks comfortable now on that lane. Okay, with that shot, he trolls only by two pins right now. Here's a replay. I tell you, the last three shots have looked exactly the same. All ten in the pit. And with this shot here, Robert can take an 18-pin lead. Okay, gets it out again. Six in a row. Well, oh, he doesn't have to worry about the 150 anymore. <laughs> He's got That's that beat by a landslide. Okay, right now, Robert Garcia can go... If he strikes out in the 10th frame, the 256. Dwayne Watkins can finish with a possible 248. So, still anybody's match here. Okay, he gets it way out. Kicks a 10 out of there. Okay, so Dwayne needs to finish out here. If he throws three in a row here, he'll definitely put the pressure on Robert Garcia to mark. strikes out here you throw and forces Robert to throw at least the first one in the 10th this is a match and once again on Hawaii TV bowling we're going down to the wire okay gets it way out okay leaves a 2 8 10 kind of gave that more speed more speed, a little more room, and it, at the same time, it didn't look like he caught all of it there. Okay, kind of oh, backing it up in there. This. Oh, again, okay, almost, almost gets the uh, two pin to bounce out of there. Almost giving us a trick okay, shot here. Take a look at this replay here. See the two pin come up, and basically there, Robert, um, excuse me, Dwayne Watkins finishes with a 216. Robert just needs to show up here, stay clean, and he will go on to our championship match. And we'll go on to face Trey Cummings. And there it is. Hey, he's lined in. Well, Scott, one for you. Lefty's there for the <laughs> championship match of the Tournament of Champions. Yeah, we got a left-hander in the finals here. This guy's throwing like a real champion now. And both bowlers in our championship match each have one title apiece. So one of these guys will walk out of here with two or with another one. Okay, another strike. This puts him in the 250s. Strike here, and Robert Garcia will finish with a 256. Watch, he's a little bit inside on this shot. Comes up high, 
And was able to kick the fork, excuse me, the six pin out of there. We all know that Dwayne the Fly Watkins will be <laughs> back. I think he's, he's going to have a big season next season. Okay, and with that shot, final score for a semifinal match, Robert Garcia, 255 over Dwayne Watkins, 216. And we'll be back with our championship match right after these important messages. Recapping the action in the first TV match, Ronald Chim Jr., 223 over Miles Oye, 209. In our second TV match, Ronald Chim Jr., 234 over Moku Kalaola, 187. In our third TV match, Robert Garcia, 150 over Ron Chim, 133. In our semifinal match, Robert Garcia, 255 over Dwayne Watkins, 216. In our championship match, we have Robert Garcia against top seed Trey Cummings. Okay, welcome back to our championship match here at Pearl Harbor Bowling Center for the Associates Financial Services Tournament of Champions. And first look at our tournament top seed, Trey Cummings. Okay, leaving the four pin there. Okay, Trey has one title. Uh, let's see if he can convert the spare here. Okay, covering the spare. Okay, Scott, this is the match. <laughs> okay, one of these bowlers will become our newest Tournament of Champions winner. Okay, Robert Garcia coming off the big 255 game. Again, he comes up high again, leaves a 4 6 10. And as you recall, in our, in our semifinal match, Robert left that in the second frame also. Same lane. Same lane. And so lane six has been the problem, but in the semifinal match, he found something, stayed with it, and shot a big 255. Okay, the winner of this match will go home with $2,928. Big bucks. I could have used that. <laughs> In fact, um, along with that, um, our first place winner receives 500 points. An entry to the King of the Hill tournament next week. Also an entry to next year's Tournament of Champions. A, P, a PBP bowling ball bag donated by Weston Eileen Uchida and a championship trophy donated by Waldo at Clocking Trophy on Sand Island Access Road. Second place will receive $1,464 and 400 points. A PBP two ball tote bag donated by Weston Eileen Uchida. Okay, and comes... Oh. Okay, now comes high and leaves a, a 6-8. Now that's actually kind of a bad break even though he came a little bit high. You know, so, um, something came from came from the wall and kind of nipped the six pin a little bit. Wasn't able to uh, get the break and kick it out. If anything, you'd think you'd just leave the six pin. This time he left the six eight. Like you said, bad break. Okay, and takes a nine count. And he gives him 18 in the second frame, so... In the rear is pretty quickly here. Okay, that's very wise to just take the count. Still not over. It's, you know, only the second frame. 